I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Nicaragua. Today I'm here with Josie Maher. We are actually doing a semi-emergency drive to Guasaule, the border crossing into Honduras. And uh, so since we had the opportunity to do this, Josie Maher is coming along with me and going to be talking about his life living here in Nicaragua. <laughs> so we're going to get to him right after the bus. We are doing the drive, so for those who are wondering if you're coming from Leon and heading north to the border to Honduras, if mostly if you're looking for like vacation stuff or if you're gonna cross into El Salvador later, uh, it's both of those cross at Guasaule, that's the crossing in Chinandega. And from Leon, from the middle of the city, it's just under two hours, so it's really not very bad. A lot of people picture Honduras a lot farther away because they're looking at the long border, they're looking at the capital, but to actually go into like the, the, the coastal areas, where most of the tourism is, where you're likely to want to go uh, if you're if you're traveling in the area. It's about two hours, and then you could be to the middle of that portion of Honduras in, I think, less than another hour. Like, you're into, into a, lot of, a lot of things you'd want to go see, a lot of coastlines, islands, Isla de Tigre, and all that. So we're doing that drive. I'm going to drop him off as he crosses the border, and I'm going to return to Leon. But so it's a perfect opportunity with us in the car and me not having a video for today yet. <laughs> we're going to do a show. So... Josie Mar, when, uh, uh, so when did you first come to Nicaragua? Give, give some context, because Jimmy's been on the show recently and he's been here one week. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yes. Wow. So this is a very different take on life in Nicaragua. Well, I met you the, well, the first time I came to Nicaragua was 12 years ago. Okay. Uh, and I was just back, back in my head. But then I met you, like, again, I want to say it was three years ago? It was three, yeah. It was, uh, like, late summer 2021? Yeah, it would have been three months after my birthday in June. Because that's like when I, it was during COVID and I was sick of like, you know, being in the house. Yep. And so I was like, let me go to Mexico and then celebrate my birthday in Mexico. And basically that taste of, you know, a little bit less restrictions in California <laughs> just made me say Gotcha. Wait, can I swear on this thing? <laughs> can I swear? Yeah, uh, I'm off that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just decided not to leave and I just went, Diving in Belize, and I worked my way down like the typical backpacker. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's about uh, how much time did you spend twelve years ago? Jeez, in Nicaragua, like, like a couple days. I or... Sounds as we were going up. Uh -huh. uh, I want to say it was like maybe two weeks. Okay. Uh, that's quite the time. And then you only visited in, in 2021, right? You were only here a few weeks, I think. I was here for a while. Turn left onto Nicaragua 68. That is, uh, we're making the turn. We're currently going east above uh, the lake, Xolitlan, and uh, we're just about to make the turn north because we got to go around the volcanoes. Uh, <laughs> so you can go west through Chinandega. It takes about 20 minutes longer. That's actually the nicer drive, I think, especially if you want, like, you know, access to restaurants. Um, this is cool, your, yeah. your tour guide to, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> they're on, I think those are mules, they actually. Are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on mules out in the... Uh, is this the turn? I want to say yes. This is totally the turn. Yes. Wow, that's a small road. Turn left onto Nick minus 68. This oh, is it. wow. This is the dirt road to Honduras. Can they see this? They cannot see this. Oh, no. no, I wish they could. I mean, we can pop the... Okay. To be fair, it's not so, dirt, though. It's like pretty... Like, that is so totally hard. dirt. Hold on, oh, we're doing this. this. Like, uh, Hold on, I can do this. Look. Run. Yeah, yeah. It's... So this is what we're driving right now. That is a hole. That is a hole. We're going to go around that. And uh, we got an hour and a half of this to get to Honduras. So here we go. The map confirmed we're on the right road, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's beautiful out here. I love this area. I hope people are seeing oh, so how so bad this road is. <laughs> okay, we're turning this back around so we can talk. That's going to be hard for them to hear while we're doing that. And uh, it's going to be very bumpy because I don't have the camera mounted. All right, we're back. We're hey, back. Hey. Yeah. I'm just double checking to see if we're on the right way. Right. I think we are. So this is only going to be six kilometers and then it's supposed to turn to go. That is beautiful. It is. Oh, I love this area so much. Ugh. So this, oh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> good thing you're in this truck, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is why I need a bigger vehicle. Taller vehicle. Do you think it's as hot in the daytime as you think? Okay. Here? Yeah. No, this is a little bit cooler, I think. Oh, oh. No. I think this should be the interview. This road should be the interview. <laughs> okay. 
We have ruts so deep that I'm riding on the sides of the ruts to try to keep the car from bottoming out and keep it moving forward. How is this the road? I've done this before. It was not like this. I'm gonna go up there. Oh, this is bad. Oh, we made it. No problem. What are you worried about? More peanuts. More peanuts. I really want to go steal some peanuts. <laughs> Going through peanut fields through the volcanoes. Okay, so how long did you stay in 2021? In 2021, so a work colleague of mine actually, I was, I literally had no plan. I was on the run, I was working remotely, uh, luckily, and I was able to work while I'm traveling. And I don't think I had like a full plan. I don't even know how long I stayed. Mm -hmm. I want to say I stayed in the crowd for a full month. For a full month. Okay. I mean, that time, I think I came up to Leon at the hotel twice. Yeah, because we used to hang out at the Simple back in 2021. Yeah. That's where we met. We this met is, once. I'm right? driving on the grass on the side of the road, for people who don't know. This is yeah. this is insane. I'm definitely coming back through Chinandega. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I see the drift temp is. I can't believe I didn't have a camera ready to film the road. I was like, nah, it's going to be kind of dark. It's not going to be It's not gonna be the best time to film a road. This would have been a great road to film. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I stayed like, I want to say a month, and I had a work colleague who was born in Nicaragua, and she was one of the Caribbean side. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And they're from this really tiny, like, idealistic village called Marshall Point. Oh, yeah. Which is conveniently really close to this really big village called Orinoco. Mm -hmm. and it's all considered islands, but it's not really islands. We're part of uh, the uh, Lagoon. Yeah. Uh, so I went out there to visit her family, and that was, I think, really big day because okay. I realized just how big Nicaragua was and how much it is to explore. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which, uh, speaking of, this is... <laughs> I, I really wish people could see this because we've got some views here. Beautiful yeah. fields, beautiful volcanoes. We got... Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Some washouts. And uh, we're good. We're good. Stop worrying, people. Like, this is... We're good. I always um, get asked the question, like... Oh, why do you live in Nicaragua? Yeah, so we're gonna get to that in a second. Okay, see those high mountains there? Uh-huh. That's Honduras. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's one of the things I love here is just out, we're still in Leon, just not in the city. Um, and we came through Tolica, if anyone's looking at the map, we're, we're north of Tolica now. And uh, just this close in Leon, we can see Honduras rising in the distance, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Because it's and much taller. To so, be honest, like if it was in Nicaragua, it would probably be Honduras. It, right. I love Honduras. <laughs> Honduras is very cool. I don't know. I love Guatemala. Yeah, Guatemala. I do like Honduras. I've never had a bad time in Honduras. Yeah. And the beans. But oh, in the terms of like the, the broadness of it and how big the country is, I mm -hmm. think it's a lot of like to see. Yeah, for sure. Like, Guatemala doesn't have the Caribbean. Yeah, only Livingston. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's like a river. And that's like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's very, yeah. very small. It's true. But so, when it comes to like, yeah, you tell you tell uh, you know, it's kind of I died oh, yes. a lot, so uh, yeah. that trip that I started with, to, to begin with, this conversation, it was a diving trip. It was my first day. I go diving every day. Right, I do that. Uh, yeah. So Honduras would have been definitely the second. Yeah. Honduras is cool. I really like it. And when we were investigating Nicaragua on our second time, we were like, should we really go look at Honduras? We, we considered it heavily. Yeah. Uh, so it's... and I. And what, was, what was the reason why you guys didn't do it? Um, it wasn't me, like, top three. Well, we had lived in Nicaragua previously, so that, that made it a lot easier. Right. You guys are not and... right? No. No, no, no. Granada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Awesome. And uh, I visited San Juan. I put in some time, like, but as a tourist. Yeah. And, I think uh, we both hate San Juan. Pretty much. Yeah. I think, basically... Hate <laughs> is a strong word. Right. We just, we don't gel with San Juan. It, like, San yeah, Juan's not, like... it's not our place. No. Um, I think you generally find, and my, my viewers are totally know this, almost everyone who loves Nicaragua either loves Nicaragua outside San Juan or loves San Juan and never or doesn't really want to venture outside. It tends to be, it's rare. It's I mean, like, what um, do you want? Do you want the beach bum lifestyle, you know, bears all day, or do you want to, like, do something? Right. Mm, like, do you want to push yourself, right? Right, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's... Do you want to, like, discover It's things. just two wildly different cultures. And uh, oh, yeah. it's really, really rare. And when you live here, I think it's obvious why. That there's yeah. just two really different cultures. And if you like one, it's really unlikely you'll like the other. 
Yeah, but it could go either, either way. Like, like San Juan. What the heck are we looking they, at? They are like, like, like Ponlio, Las Benitas, yep. uh, Popoyo. Those are like worlds away from San Juan as well. Yeah. But they haven't gone in that direction, which is pretty nice. Yeah, I'm letting yeah. this truck through. This is bad. It's not that bad spot. It, well, it's going to be bad if I try to squeeze by that truck. I feel like... Oh, oh look at like, that, though. We... Yeah, that's bullshit. I mean, look at the truck trying to get through. Yeah. What is it full of? Ranchitos. It's... It's, is full it, of, is, it's full of ranchitos. Hope. <laughs> Let's hope it, like, it, it is ranchy. Well, it's taquitos, taqueritos. Okay, I do not. We're gonna get stuck. This is bad. No, I think. Hmm. Um, it's not Just great. Just take it easy. Put your lights. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. There's. This are the lights on. The lights on this car are completely shot. I, this I think so. Yeah. I watched him, and, and I think he he didn't want to go this way because he was heavier. Because this is soft. Yeah, it is sound right. But he bottomed out. Oh, that's. I just gotta. I just gotta put the wheel over here. Okay. Then we're okay right here. This is nice and hard because the rocks. So we're cool. Right now, a bunch of people are like, I don't know if I want to drive there. This is really bad. But there, I, is a, there is a lot of comfort, I think, for people who are retirees or. Like, sound was a good place to stop, right? It can be because, a good place to start. The biggest it, problem that I have, what do you think, to the right or to the left? I want to say to the, the right. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, f it, do it. Nah, I think, I think we're going to back it up. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> Die when it's we're just going to back up and hopefully not rip the front off the car. Well, there's no one behind oh. us, is there? Oh, what? Oh, okay. Someone put a water bottle in my back window, I mean, so I look back like, and, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like, what? Why do people do that? Everyone who gets in my car has this thing about throwing things in the back window. <sighs> okay. No so, one gets the Scott's car, it's just caught on the office. Just me throwing things in my back window. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving in. Um, I can see why people would go this way. <laughs> look, someone else went around the other way too, because this is so bad. Uh, no, I can make this though. We're we're narrow, so I can. But I can't imagine there. this is where the buses come from. Like all those like huge buses. Probably, but they have a lot more clearance no, than I do. There's like another road. It must be. Are you See, saying you connects... can't imagine? Yeah, I cannot. Like... Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. We have so much farther to go. We're in the middle of nowhere. There's like no cars passing us. If we get stuck out here, this is gonna suck. I want to say it's probably far more, right? I'm taking that road, I think. Yeah. Oh wait, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks a lot safer now. There's nobody coming. He's all like, there could be traffic. <laughs> there can't be. Can't be traffic. It's funny because uh, this trip was actually, well, the flight was a gift for my friend. Oh, jeez. Uh, because she didn't want me hitchhiking. I like hitchhiking. Uh-huh. Like, I love hitchhiking. Uh, and Whoa, she was like, nice. you're not going to make it in time for the end of the day. We're going to go to Oaxaca for <laughs> the end of the day. Ah, um, uh, cool. And she's like, you're not here. I, he's checking. I'm getting in early Christmas present. She didn't want to miss it. Oh. We, we planned this trip for like a full year. Oh, jeez. We have the Airbnb built books for a full year. And she's just incredible. To be honest. It's great. Whereas, thank you if you see this. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you missed your flight. And because it was Day of the Dead in my hometown. So I lived there to Messiah. I actually moved there. Tell me who's. Oh, you on the lake? They won't make point. What? Yeah. I moved like a month ago. Weird. I mean, dream come true, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's near to the lake. Oh, boy, it was amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. And, yeah, it's, yeah, again, again, opposite of like San Juan. It's just like, right. I'm surrounded by Nicaragua. It's like a whole house in, uh, in, in Caterina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of like three expats in the day. Right, right, yeah. Oh, there's a horse. He could save us if we need. It's good to know that at least there's life out here. Going on the grass again. The grass is solid. It's the road that's a problem. Um, okay, so you're heading up to Mexico. Right now we're getting you to El Salvador because you're trying to catch a flight, flight out of yeah. San Salvador. Yes. Okay. You've got a, you've got a long uh, evening ahead of you. Six hours. From the border? Six hours. I'm, gonna, I'll, I'm definitely going to jump in a truck or jump on the back of something. I like that kind of stuff. I'll pitch yeah. up the world. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like hitchhiking. Um, this dog, who definitely doesn't have a house because there's no house. It's well fed, though. 
He is. He's a lot healthier than he is a very like, healthy dog. He looks a lot. He's probably eating a lot. That's a very happy, healthy dog just yeah. hanging out. Well, first of all, he doesn't have to dodge cars or anything. Okay, so back to you. Here's another one. Here's his friend. They're doing well. They're cool. So you decided to stay in Nicaragua. When did you? So so before we do why, when did you return? So so basically, I we, I was living in Australia. Uh huh. Uh, I right when COVID, yep. right when COVID hit, mm -hmm. and then we had a choice: do we, my partner and I, do we, you know, go back home to the US or we stay in Australia? Nobody knew what the fuck. Sorry, nobody knew what the hell COVID was going to bring. You know, it was like play by air, day by day, okay, for a week. Like it just rose, and we said, okay, let's go back to California. Went back, but previously to Australia, there I there are just been, some cows in the road right now. And naked, grooming each other. And naked, it's a baby. Uh, I had lived abroad in Asia and Africa for the last right. combined, I want to say like nine, nine, ten years. Mm -hmm. so I've, been a, I've been gone from the US a long time and I've been privileged enough to live in the global south or like, uh, you know, developing places. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's really interesting because as an entrepreneur, as someone who has worked uh, in construction design, building, for most of my life, um, being in places like this, I've all as always afforded a lot more, I guess, possibilities mm -hmm. of reach and easier to come to a place than you know, per se, like having to build a hotel in the US or right. you know what I mean, or like build a restaurant or you know, just access to stuff here. Again, that's a privilege because I have you know, I'm lucky enough to have two passports, you know, right, and have. Supposed to income to live from, mm -hmm. you know, and, and have that choice. You know, a lot of Americans can't do that, a lot of Nicaraguans can't do that, right? And Asia is not good, so yeah, yeah. it's very lucky to, to choose a place like this. So, after my first one I met you, I think I was coming and going like whatever two months. It was, yeah, like every, you'd be around for a little bit and then gone for a while. So, I wasn't two or three months and I'd be back because I was feeling it out. I was like, okay, do I want right. to do I actually want to move here? You know, I had the same. I mean, I was not scared. It was just like, does it feel good? That looks like a real highway. A semi just That's went what by. I'm saying, yeah, it's, All right, we, we, we survived. Took, we took a shortcut. That's what we did. There is a good novel that goes back to that. I heavily recommend not taking the shortcut. <laughs> do it. Don't be foolish. Do it. There's cute cows and dogs. There are. And the view was nice. There was no traffic. It was beautiful. There was definitely no traffic. One truck the whole way and a guy on a bicycle. Yeah. Do it in a rental car. Right. Or if you have an old beat up Toyota, that doesn't matter. Um, okay. No. So, anyway, so you're asking why not Honduras? Um, you know, I think part of it was no particular place in Honduras like just grabbed us. We weren't like, ah, oh, this spot. We got to be in that spot. Yeah. And of course, you know, I have kids and we want to live. Obviously, it's that way. I want to say so, yeah. Yeah, it's got yeah. Her. How could it not be? And look, look at the size of this intersection coming off That's of an insane. undrivable road. But I mean, that then makes again, no sense at all. But this is the Pan American, right? This is the, no. the, the, the Pan American. No, yeah. it's not. Is it not? No. Oh, is there like anything beautiful. coming? No. You find on my side. Okay, yeah, there's nothing here. I wonder if they can see that volcano all the way to the back. No, so there's no way. Else? You can't see out the back window. Even even if you just turn around, you can't see out the back window. No way they will. Um, it's insane. It is beautiful out here, though. That was crazy. But that, yeah. the funniest thing was that intersection. Imagine coming down this and then turning onto that intersection being like, I'm going to take this major highway. Right? And then being like, this is an unpassable dirt road. What have I just done? They have a lot of like communal spaces on the ground, which yeah. is a really good job. What, of, is, like, what is off that way that they have a huge sign? It says 13 kilometers ban pro. <laughs> you can get to a bank with 13 kilometers. Oh, that is a beautiful view of the volcanoes. Can you oh my gosh. No, you get some way too hard. Yeah. yeah. And it won't see the I'm going to take this photo and then I'll show it to them. Oh, I feel like Costa Rica was just not a buy. Oh, gosh. No, Costa Rica was never on our list. Yeah. Never a consideration. We used to live in Panama. We loved that. I like Panama. And, uh, I like Panama City, but I like Panama. Both. I like both. I like the city. Yeah, I like the, the country. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So many billboards everywhere. True. Um, so, so nothing in Honduras really grabbed us, but we have little kids. So Honduras was still, especially then, but still now, has a lot of safety concerns, and it's a lot more complicated. Nicaragua was so safe. 
that I just had this conversation. So I'm gone for six weeks, and I was trying to get my friend Caroline to come house it. Uh, and she's actually part Honduran. She's half. Oh yeah. Half, half, half Puerto Rican, half Honduran. Uh huh. And I was like, oh yeah, come, you know, this beautiful lake house, and come use it, like free, whenever you want. You just sit for six weeks. You can stay, you know, one week. And she's talking to her girls, and one of them read one of these, you know, articles like they could rock this in the oh, country. Geez. And I was like, Caroline, are you f***ing kidding me? I was like, you know, you have to appease your friends as well, right? And I was like, at least please look at some new YouTube videos or magazines, right. and please just show it to your friends. That's, that was my last message, to her, actually. I was like, can you just like show them some blogs, show them some travel blogs, like some recent ones, not just like some outdated news, right? Right. It's outdated by 40 years. Yeah. And out of context. Well, I mean, 2017 was like one headlines. Yeah, but it was never dangerous for tourists. Like the actual numbers, it never got as dangerous as attending school in the U.S. Awesome. Right. But so, they were like. So is she in the U.S.? Does she ever leave her house? Yeah. Actually. Then they're asking her to be more in danger every day. Yeah. Right. It's like it's like what's the most dangerous part of coming to Nicaragua for an American? Yeah. Getting to the airport. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're, no, it's not a lot safer here, right? But at no point since the U.S. had troops here shooting at people. Yeah. And that I mean, was the U.S. And the thing that made it being you're dangerous pushing, was you're the pushing quiet. I, yeah, Right. Yeah. But it's an important context, right? That, like, yeah. that I mean, the, yeah, it's frustrating because people will be like, oh, it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous, but you're cool with a place that's slightly more dangerous? Only slightly. Like it's really close, yeah. right? We're in we're point one apart, so we're, we're the closest tracking. Like just... hmm. Yeah, and like if you read the world news, like other countries have these. Like it's not safe to go to the U.S. Right? Arbitrary arrest. I think arrest. I've only heard of like when it. I can't talk. I can't speak to like my Nicaraguan friends because mm-hmm. I I know a couple of them do get like mugged or robbed, but then they also like I hang up with them. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but all of. Like, of, in terms of all my extra extra and hand here, they're playing baseball across the highway. Why not? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a pretty cool scene. That was pretty cool. He like yeah, he pitched right on that. And it was silhouetted by the sunset, so like and the volcanoes in the background. Right? Like, three volcanoes in front of I us right really, now. there was no way, even if the camera had been turned around, no one was going to actually see that. Yeah. Because it was too, but it was cool. It was really iconic. But in like three years, I've you know been you know I want to say. It, Living here permanently, I think I've only heard of, I want to be, you know, generous and say four expats getting robbed or mugged. Yeah, I know one who was mugged in Leon two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, but was it violent? Did you grab his phone? He was drunk? No, no, he had someone pulled a knife. Okay. Um, pulled up, and, and, but he was in a bad part of town. Not that there's a bad part of town, but, you know, he's in a rough part of town in the middle of the night and drunk. Right, which they say, please don't do this. It encourages crime. You're just really big targets. I love restaurants and places like this. You do that in like, like the kitchen and you get fucking robbed. Right, yeah, it, it'll happen anywhere. So it's, yeah, it's uh, it's gonna happen. No, nowhere is completely without crime. But yeah, so and I know one guy got uh, got mugged on the beach, or let's say he got attempted mugged on the beach. A couple guys jumped him, and he grabbed one of the guys and beat the other senses with that guy. Well, like, well, like, well, one of the guys that got robbed was a friend of mine, and he was drunk. He was at, at one of these, you know, Granada, like, pub calls or whatever. Oh, I remember you told me about this. And yeah. I grabbed the machete, and he came back. I was like, what's going on? What's going on? And I grabbed my machete, and I ran out with a fucking machete right. trying to find these guys, and, like, because I'm Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking run. I always have to do with my machete. And I went around looking, and I, you know, I pulled up a people, and... I don't know. Yep. But at the end of the day, I really think that Nicaragua was, un- in terms of like welcoming people, they want because they, they know that they have this reputation, right? And so they're right. always really happy to see people come in or start the businesses because they also know what it means to be hungry. Like, yep. they can take a and- oh, what a beautiful sunset over here. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. And you know, living in the US, like you lived in LA, I lived in Flint, Michigan, no, lived, Rochester, lived, New York. No, the, Wait, never? Oh, Northern California. I would never live in LA. Yeah. I live in oh, I hate it. Chuckina, by the city. Oh, right. And North right. Of, uh, Sacramento. Um, I lived in Rochester, New York. I lived in Flint, Michigan. Places that were setting records for how dangerous they were. When did you live in Flint? I swear I went to school. Fuck, okay. man. Yeah. It was, uh, 
It was rough. I heard the water's still bad. Isn't actually the water is still bad. The water. Is still bad. They're never gonna clean that place up. Why? There's no. There's nobody's interested in actually fixing things. I'm sure it's a little bit better, but no, that is that is a rough area. So anyway, okay. So Honduras just never like it. If we had to live in Honduras, we'd be happy. Like it's I, a, it's a I cool actually like central Honduras. It's very like lush. Like the Central forest. Valley area. Yeah. Oh, it's this really cool uh, national park, and there's like a, a microbrewery there as well. But it was a cool couple of days of like hiking, tubing, literally no one there, but insanely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Just like, damn. Just... <laughs> yeah, I like Honduras every time. I like the driving. The roads are a little bit rough. Yeah. Um, but I've only I feel like that's time. why I like, sorry, fun. Oh, no, just uh, the little bit of time we've put in there has been like, it's nice and, and a good restaurant scene. Very happy with cities I've been to. I'm hoping to go up and put in some, some time sometime soon. In San Pedro Sula, because that's supposed to be really improved with a lot of cool stuff going on, and I want to like San Pedro Sula is is, is I mean, the second largest city. Yep. Uh, it was, I think, number something of like one of those dangerous cities. Oh, like, it was number one for forty a while. years ago, something like thirty years ago. Oh like, no, what? like eight years ago. No. It was yeah, pretty. Recently. So what what do you see in San Pedro Sula? Even though it's this really perfectly located place, and the airport hub is quite big. That's yeah, a, yeah. a lot of traffic right through there. Uh, is, is what has happened is changed the architecture of the city. Yeah. And so all of the houses, all of the, the all of the businesses are just like, you know, raw iron, you know, just they've made it like pretty ugly. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, that's unfortunate. It yeah. looks and it smells like, oh, this could be sketchy, but it's, mm -hmm. it's not really. Right, not anymore. I think Tegucigalpa, Tegucigalpa is more sketchy than San Pedro. Sula. I think now it actually is. I think numerically, like if you're looking at the stats, yeah. It's it's uh, more dangerous now. Well, any they, capital, right? It's also maybe the most dangerous. So, well, San Pedro, no, San Pedro was worse for a long time. It just, it yeah. just got you know they put more effort into cleaning it up, and then Tegucigalpa just had less done to it. It's gotten better too. It just I wanted that because places. of the Caribbean coast. Maybe. Yeah, right. Because all the traffic. Is it's a there. yeah. It's the it's where people tend to come in for for holidays and stuff. That's the airport for that. Yeah. Um, this, at least like, this tinted window, you, like, this is just gorgeous over How did you like the leaves? I, back, right? I did, uh, well, it's been a few months, but yeah, yeah I mean, Belize was cool. Um, it was very interesting. Honestly, it, not a draw would never hit right? my radar for living, right? never. You have the like, beach, I love this all the islands are tiny, anywhere. tiny as hell. Yep. And then the city, forget about it. it, it so, so if we're talking about safety, Belize drips of not very safe. Like you feel I mean, it's a, it's, it's a huge transshipment point for like any and everything, right? It's, you know, Mexico is, Mexico's a backyard port. Right, right. right. Yeah, like it's, black, uh, right? And, uh, and everything's flat. And, and I was there, my taxi driver is like, oh yeah, so my girl, his girlfriend, his wife, I don't know, was is from Bluefields here in Nicaragua. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, do you ever go back? He's like, I do, but you know, it's exactly this. He's like, I he can't is tell. Also very... Yeah, and he's very, he's just like, it's like a nicer, safer version of this. And yeah. so Belize. We should go to like... Bluefields for the carnival. We definitely should. Do you know what it is? Uh, I want to say it's at the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. I'll I, be back I, on I December 6th. Okay. Um, a Nicar my Nicaraguan neighbor has made me the godchild, the godfather's child. Aww. I know, this, cool. I know this guy, like, six months. <laughs> Would you be the call for the kid? I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I was like, are you sure? Like, you know how I many like, you know, all the friends that you want to ask? But you and I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um. So okay, so Nicaragua. When did you make the decision to come back, like to stay? So you were doing in and out for a while. So right, I mean, that was twenty twenty two. After, after right? like nine, ten years living abroad in you know places like Cambodia and Thailand and Uganda. And all these places where I got really accustomed to, I think, uh, I want to say the word, uh, homogenous countries. Okay. Where it's like one culture, uh -huh. like one rhythm, what you see is what you get. Monocultures. No, homogenous. Well, a monoculture, a single culture. No, monoculture country. refers to like plants, right? But I, I guess you could, yeah, 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 monoculture, homogenous. Monoculture it just has a bad connotation. It's like GMOs and Monsanto. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so from all the genetically modified people in the um, I in knew the that, you know, in those months of COVID, years of COVID, mm -hmm. um, don't even, like, I try to place dates for COVID anymore. Um, 
I was constantly like thinking, okay, Indonesia, back to Thailand, you know, like looking for somewhere to, to move. So I had, I would had started this trip. It was yeah, it was my birthday. It was unplanned. Just went diving for basically three months, uh, all along the coast, and I was at the same time looking for somewhere to, to move because you know COVID was kept, we were coming out of COVID. Yep. Kind of, you could travel. You know, flights were back up, that kind of stuff, and. Cool. And then, so that we, we kind of, we've kind of <laughs> covered on, yeah, so that was like 2022, right? I think. Yeah. So, so you've actually been living here over two years, like, like Call, calling permanently, it home. Yeah, permanently. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's, like, it's, yeah, it's kind of hard to believe. It's still, yeah, I think I'm still processing, like, COVID, I'm still processing all that stuff. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like it's hard for date, it's COVID. Hard, it's hard for to date stuff in that time because mm-hmm. I try not to date stuff, and we will, and we as a you know society were not yep. dating stuff. Right, right. Look at the size of this bridge we're going over. But this Mo- is the Mokoran Bridge. Mokoran. A, quite a ravine we must be going over. Yeah. Elton, if you're watching this, we're getting closer and closer to you, but I, I can't stop by and visit. There's a big this truck. Is beautiful. Here. This is. And this highway is perfect. I can't believe we came up that terrible dirt road and we're on this gorgeous highway. I don't know why YouTube's the algorithm had me getting into these. Have you ever seen these videos on YouTube where it's just a guy walking and he has that like camera that faces him and then one faces outwards? Oh, yeah. And it's just him walking with ambient music. That has been popping up on my feed. It's funny. It's because you watch my show. Yeah, I mean that's kind of mine. I, I flip it back and forth. I don't use the dual. Yeah. Because the generally the quality goes way down, or you got to carry multiple cameras. Like it's. It's insanely relaxing. It can be. Yeah. Yeah. Is he walking somewhere cool in cities? What's he yeah, doing? it's always like hiking. I like hiking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Like I think with Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, is like you can go places and like get out like different like you know climates and different like scenery and yeah, mm-hmm. it's just nice. Yeah, it, it's the same in Cambodia. You get all these different like microclimates. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like here, like this is nothing like where either of us live. Yeah. yeah. Like I remember we went up to Esteli one, one in, like in the dry season, hot season here, mm-hmm. and we were like, we were like three layers. It was insane. It was so <laughs> nice. Another meal. Oh, it is. No, that's a horse. Small horse, but it was a horse. Yeah. You can tell from the face. Um, that's a lot of people walking along this road. Where are they going? <laughs> Honduras, apparently. Um, it's funny. I said I was going to Honduras, and Paul's like, "That's really far." I'm like, "It's, it's not." <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, we need to get some food. What do you want to eat? I don't. I don't. Is there any good spots? No. Fine. 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 I've done this drive once in a shuttle. Really? I've done Honduras, but not Guasale from Leon. Like this is, you're I'm seeing it. I don't think there's a settlement along this way. There must be. I don't think so. Check out. He's gonna do some mapping, but this is one of the challenges of Nicaragua is that a lot of the cool places you want to go, there's nothing along the way. Hopefully the camera's looking pretty good because we're, we're kind of twilighting here. Yeah. It's good. Hi. Yeah, no, it seems okay on the monitor. We the sun has gone down. Israel. I wonder what that is. Um, most likely Colonel Israel, probably the name of a town. Uh-huh. There is a place called Vila. Fifteen. Yeah. Um, that looks like a. Mm, that looks like it might like a have village. a village. Uh, uh, Comodor. If we're if we're lucky, yeah. This is a beautiful road, but there is nothing on it. Nothing at all. And there's a very few houses on it, honestly. Like yeah, there are houses, obviously, but it's it's pretty sparse. Do this you is think that you can MP. see yourself living in a place like this? Up here, absolutely. Yeah, right. Me too. Yeah, it's very serene the especially if you have a view if you're on like either high ground over here or you're over there and you're not looking through this hedgerow like if that was my nightly okay. sunset i'd be like yep this is pretty chill i mean i grew up on a farm right yeah yeah so i have like this so part of me loves big cities and so guatemala city buenos aires those kinds of places like i have this real big affinity for those kinds of places mm-hmm. but i also really love like farmland yeah because i just grew up with what do you do you look out the window and it was just the the cornfields you yeah. know and, and horses wandering is that around. deep horizon that you get from like watching the ocean as well 
Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was just it's just the green horizon instead of the yeah. blue horizon and it's um and I like the the staring off into the distance of, you know, I could just you can't do this with the ocean. I mean you could, but it would be insane. If you're not, if you're not yeah. Right. But like staring off and being like, I could just start walking and I wonder where I would go. And when I was young I used to do that. Because I grew up in a really safe area. Yeah. Even though it was near really dangerous areas. I grew up in a really safe area. So even when I was really young, you'd be like, I'm just gonna head out the door and walk to the horizon. And then when I was a little bit older I would bicycle and I would go 80 huh. miles and I would explore every road, every direction, every turn, every everything. And it was one of my favorite things. Like that was my middle teenage years, an obsession that I on foot or on bicycle, but under my own locomotion, went everywhere I could reach. And so I knew three counties. I could tell you, every, I'd be like, oh yeah, the, the blue house with the blah, 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 yeah, yeah, about yeah. a quarter mile past. And the people would be like, what are you talking? What road there's are you? I've never nothing heard of going on there, but there's nothing yeah. else for you to fucking notice. And so I had this like thing where I knew every little like, oh, I know there's this guy that sells vitamins out of his right, garage, yeah, yeah. and like, and just and because you're but going by so that's how it's here as well, though. It is. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's how you find shit in Nicaragua too. You talk to so people, that's, you talk to like shit, and they know. It's one of the reasons that I like so much exploring on foot. It's because mm -hmm. you move slowly and you could read everything and you, you see. Learn things, more. And you're like connected to the place. Totally. And so I've I turned um, when I was an older teenager. I had a car. Yeah. As Americans do, and I drove, so my range got much bigger. And suddenly we were going to neighboring cities. And then when I was 18, I was going to other states. And I always just explored. Yeah. And so like right but now, I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm you know pushing 40, and back then we had like Garmin and. Actual maps. Yeah, I didn't have that. Oh, actual maps. Yeah, we had actual maps in, we had maps in the back of a... Right, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had nothing electronic, just... We had a, a Garmin, like, for I want to say, 15 or something. Yeah, I didn't have that. I had, I had no what GPS. What you? You had a lot of saving camera. 48. <laughs> so, yeah. So old enough that it was paper maps, and I had to learn how to read paper maps. Yeah. And I had a watch, so I knew what time it was. But all orientation I had to figure out from just looking at the environment. Yeah. Like there was no... Oh yeah, my God, so, that is insane. And, that, and I went everywhere. I would disappear for... the. I would leave first thing in the morning Are on a bicycle. This? I'm sorry, it's like blood red. Oh, it is. Oh That's my insane. gosh. And with the volcano silhouetted against the... It is. It's like blood red with volcanoes. It looks like a, a poker stuff. Yeah. But then this side is just green and like the hazy blue. So beautiful. Um, yeah, so it was, I would leave with a paper map folded up in the back of my bicycle as a tractor. And um, I would just go and go and go and go. And I had to, you know, read road names. What and, kind of and, bike did you have? Um, so I, when I was really young, I had a Huffy. That's what I learned on. That was, was it like, a Huffy like stunt bike? Uh, no, 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 no. Like a real road bike. Oh, nice. For, okay. Yeah. Um, but then when I turned 15, it would turn. When I was 15, I was really serious about bicycling and, and considered being a professional athlete. Like yeah. I was like I cycled a lot. It was my hobby, and so I really wanted an aluminum bike. And this is back when that kind of stuff was not a thing. Mm -hmm. And Schwinn had three models of aluminum bikes, and by the time I'd come up with enough money to get one, they were discontinued. Oh no! But I worked really hard, called everywhere, and managed to find the very last one in a warehouse in Chicago, and had it custom sent, custom ordered, custom. I got whatever was available. Got the last. Aluminum Schwinn ever made. And this is not online. No, there was how no do you internet. Actually this go is, about, how this do you is actually... 1991. Wait, no, so I would no, tell the kids. Let's, let's tell the kids how you actually went about I buying, had, buying the bike yep. and ordering it. Bicycle was magazines. It nice. And I had to call the manufacturer. Like I was calling Schwinn, and they're like, "Here's where they've been sent." And they talked about. They're like, so I actually talked to Schwinn, and they're like, um, "There's manufacturing problems with aluminum, and because Schwinn was moving out of the U.S." At the time, this is uh -huh. easily still true, the U.S. was such a leader in aluminum welding mm -hmm. that when they left the U.S., they could not hire the skill to weld aluminum bikes. They moved oh. to chromoly, which was much it was cheaper and more popular. And aluminum bikes hurt. They are painful to ride, but mm -hmm. they give more power. Mm -hmm. So as a racer, that's what I wanted. They were lighter, more powerful, but they were really bad for long distance road. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted. So I worked really hard and they talked to me and and I couldn't get the ones that I wanted. I wanted higher end models and they were gone. But they were the same frame. So I, I only you gave up the colors, or... it was black. Okay. It was not what I wanted. That was what was available. What did you want? I can't remember that now. I feel like maroon. Oh yeah. it was it was a cool color. For but yeah. yeah, that's a good color. Yeah. yeah. 
and uh, so this is a road bike. This was, and I was svelte back then, right? It could the wheels could only hold 180 pounds, right? Yeah. Maximum. They're super high pressure. So super high pressure wheels with a aluminum frame. Every bump in the road went straight through your spine. Oh my it was god, bad. Oh my but, god. So I called this warehouse in Chicago, managed to get the thing, had it sent to a Schwinn dealer in Batavia, New York. Yeah. Took forever. Finally got it. I spent more on that bike than I did on my first car, and. Um, today's dollars, I probably spent $4,000 equivalent, what which is... Have, what do you think a bike is almost way down? I, mean, I still have it. You still have it? Uh -huh. Hell yeah. It's not like in my like my possession. Um, a buddy of mine's a triathlete. You know where and it he is. Uses it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yep, yep. Love I've that. kept it you all these years. All of and, the spare words in. Uh, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> you should sneak a play. I'm going to beep. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I have to listen to this whole video tonight. Really? It has to go live tonight. And because uh, I'm I'm way behind because of everything going on, I've not been able to uh, keep keep any. I like when you do the. Uh, are you gonna do any more of those? Uh, but you need to remind me when you're doing that the live things. Every Thursday. It's every Thursday. Yep. We've not. We've only missed. But like, yeah, I know. Only get, when I, I was this, in Argentina. I normally get the special treatment, and you send me a private message. That's uh, what I try, but it's like I'm sending so many messages. If I haven't talked to you recently, and I'm you know what you and could do? You can. I need to make a group. Make a group where no one else can reply. Ah, uh, yeah. There is, I, I believe you can go out of All right, unfortunately the camera overheated and turned off because we've been recording for a while. Because the conversation was too hot. It was. It was, uh... We don't even remember what we were talking about. We, yeah, we apologize. We don't know what we were talking about. So in the meantime, we Sounds pulled awesome. it down, swapped it out, the uh, battery. We're getting a little bit closer to the border. There are no restaurants out here, but that brought us to talking about how Josie Bar has never been to a whole bunch of places. Chinandega? Never been to Carrasso. You've lived here for years. You gotta go to some of these places. I so let's let's back up. Shenandega, um got a couple. It's got some cool it's museums. That's a gold mining place, right? No, no. Shenandega um, is a port. Yes. Yeah, I haven't been there. Yep, and uh, they have some really good restaurants. It's got a good restaurant scene. Not a, not the best. It's not like it's not like a restaurant town. But for Leon, like they've got a number of things we don't have, so we tend to go up there because we're going out for a nice restaurant or a nice well, hotel. When, when, you, when you say like nice restaurant, what kind of food are you talking about? Um, French, uh, Asian fusion, like actual variety. Chinandega is the richest city in the country. Because of the port. Because of the port and the logistics and the it's where Florida Canya is. Oh, is and, it? Yeah. Oh, okay. And the, and the cane fields that support Florida Canya, the railroad, the port, um, the Pan American Highway goes through, so it's the main. I don't want to sound um, like an idiot. I want to sound like an idiot. Uh huh. Is it railroad? There's, uh, there's a really, really tiny is railroad. It an agro railroad. It is an okay. agro railroad that okay. just it just hauls sugarcane. Cool. Yep. And I don't even know if it's active right now. It was active when I used to live here. Um, they've got they show that the one train at the museum, um, at the Florida County Museum, um, and then but. It's expected that Corinto, the port at Chenandega, is going to be getting its old railroad back. That's not guaranteed, that's not news, that's just, there's been a promise to do a study to see if it makes sense. Have you seen, have you gone to the railroad museum in Granada? No, I've been to where it is, but it wasn't a museum when I lived there, and so I haven't got to check it out. How is it? Oh, it's not, it's like, it's little. It's tiny, but they are like these two tiny cabs and there are these two seater train like, uh, carriages. Uh -huh. Basically, that's it. It's VIP, wooden. Oh, that's it's cool. like a, a convertible, which is insane. I've never seen that before. Oh, that's really neat. I need to go yeah. film that. Yeah. I know that that's new and that's part of the promotion for the new railroad coming in, which is going to go to Granada, but not going to use the old station, which I'm actually happy about because the old station is too small. What I'm really hoping is that we get some nice big new stations and like make it fancy. Yeah. So we'll see. That's that's asking a lot of, uh, of the new railroad, but. That's where I think some really cool future of the country is going to be is in doing that stuff. And sorry that it's completely dark out and we have to use this light. <laughs> we, we ran out of light. We tried it without the light. Look what we look like. Yeah, you can't. Um, we can light up Josie Mar with his, his phone maybe, but that's about it. No, it's fine. I, I hate it. So, yeah. Anyway. I think so, uh, so. so, yeah. So, Chinandega, if you got to go because they've got um, some cool museums. They've got some cool restaurants, uh, several cool restaurants. They have some fancy hotels because it, they do business there. There's no tourist stuff. Is that like, where the, I think there's like one resort kind of like all inclusive, like like hotel there. Kind um, of. So, I mean, okay. So Chinandega, the department is huge. It's the it's the northern two thirds of Old Leon, which was enormous, enormous. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, so way up there, why are they flashing us? That was that's definitely the police. Oh no, it's an ambulance. It might be an ambulance. And um, uh, 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 Cuesta del Sol. Marina Cuesta del Sol. Right, that's is the up one. there. Yes, that is technically but in I the Departamento like, Chinandega, but it is. I heard it's like yeah. No, it was really nice. Well, I mean, I stayed there nine years ago, and it was yeah. four hundred and fifty a night nine Jesus. years ago, and it's a beautiful spot. We absolutely loved it. Um, we spent just one night there, but we were driving. Uh, we were trying to get to uh, um, Potosí in the north, and so Chinandega is really big. So so. The marina is hours north of the city. It's not like in the city or in the city zone or anything of the sort. It is. It's like we're still in Leon right now. Uh -huh. It's like this to uh -huh. Leon, right? Like uh -huh. just so far away. Um, so yes, that is there. It is cool, um, and it's in the jungle. Like you're completely isolated. Like you're expected to get there by boat from El Salvador. Um, so yeah, but so yeah, that's Chinandega. Chinandega though has like nice hotels in the city. Um, it has clubs. Like it's a real city. It's a big city. Really nice parks. Yeah, it's it's big. Like 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 bigger than Granada. I can think of Granada. Granada is generally people talk about one of the big cities, but it's it's actually on the smaller side. Well, but, like the commercial sense, I just show it's like tiny. <laughs> There's no restaurants. Which, you know. It's the most restaurants of any city outside Managua. Really, Granada yeah. is by far. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one of the reasons that people choose to live there is it's got the the restaurant variety. Has, like, good restaurants. They have some good restaurants, but yeah. nowhere close to as many as, as Granada. Yeah, because Granada has them in the center, on the outskirts, like all over the place. San Juan does have some interesting like driveaways out into the countryside. There's like a quirky little neighborhood with it. That's a seriously cool. Like I love that stuff about San Juan, mm -hmm. but um, the number of restaurants like that is very few and far between. They've got like these little pockets of a few places, but even in San Juan, you're like, oh, there's just this one place that does this, this one place that does that. But Granada has many of everything, pretty much. Um, so it's, yeah, that's a draw of Granada is all the restaurants. Way more than Leon, so much more than Leon. But, uh, yeah, but then, but then Carrasso, you said you've never been to Carrasso. No, but everyone I've met is yeah. insane. So this is like, crazy because because you lived like just like right on the border. Like, I know, but five like, minutes. The, again, Nicaragua is a huge country, man. There's a lot of places I haven't been. <laughs> right, but I, I would say you, like, I would say I do get around. Yeah, it's just a funny because a lot of people a lot of people, say, lot of people would mistake where you lived for Carrasso. Like you live so close that you're in the area that's it's a little bit hard to be sure it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, like the road to go, like to get to your old place, you had to go through Grasso. Yeah, I feel like it also like has to do with, like how like I spread my my uh I'm saying, it's seen, how I spread my my social circles. Yep. It, it started, you know, in the expat and in Granada, and it moved to like before you in San Juan, and I think that's how like I go traveling with mm -hmm. Oh, come visit, or oh, let's go check out the scene. Right, you right. You know what I mean? Like that's how like and and so no one's really inviting me to Grasso. Like I don't. Do you know people that live in Carrasso? Um, one of my viewers' aunts owns one of the mansions in Dolores, in the middle of Carrasso. Right of Dolores. It's, it's an itty-bitty little village between Tino Tepe and Didiamba. Yeah. And so it's just the spot along the road. Now, in the live stream, three weeks ago, uh -huh. we were trying hard. There was a steakhouse in Dolores that was really cool, and it's a whiskey tasting room. Uh -huh. And I wanted to show it to people, and it's been taken off of Google Maps. I can only imagine it went out of business. Like, there's no reference to it, no pictures of it. And I was there a year ago with Earl. Hey, Earl. Um, and Marcella and um, on, a, on a tour. And uh, we, we were just driving by. And I'm like, oh, everybody's hungry. Where can we stop? We're in Dolores. And then I looked at Google Maps. I'm like, there's a place right behind the car. That looks <laughs> amazing. And we turned and went in. And we were the only people in there, which is probably why it disappeared. Wasn't it wasn't a big It was big. It looked like Texas fancy. Yeah. And like all stonework, big lobby, high Cause ceilings. Because like, you know the restaurants in Mazatepe, they're like huge, like all these Madongo places, and mm -hmm. these huge restaurants that do really, really well on weekends. So yeah, I say maybe it's like a It's weekend. not like that. It's no. not like a Nicaraguan place at all. It didn't. I mean, no, mas no, in, in Mazatepe, the restaurants on the, on the main road, they're like pretty up there, bro. Like, nice steakhouses. Oh, yeah. 
but it's What's all uh, this? I don't know. Truck stop. Do you think you can get some cheese? I mean, maybe. <laughs> I just see a bunch of trucks parked on the road, though. Yeah, this but is... truckers eat, and truckers eat truckers well. Truckers, truckers eat. know where to eat. They know where the good food is. This is, this is people doing maintenance. Check the map. Just make sure we know where we are. Um, I feel like see. we're in that place that I saw on the map before. <laughs> that, oh, makes, that makes no sense at all. Via seventeen or whatever. Yeah, let's. Oh, there's. I. Mm, I don't think that's a place to stop. I know yeah, it's a Nueva. Thing. Hold on one second. We're almost to Villa Nueva. Okay. And I think that's where we should stay. We should, we should you know, take Be a able walk. to stop, yeah. Nueva Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. Okay. Oh, the school, and then there's Campo Football. Sorry we had to make it dark, everybody, but it's really dark out here with a lot of stuff going on. So I just want to be able to see everything. This is this is a settlement here. There's like a fair amount of activity. All right, we're gonna take a break from talking so we can figure out what's going on here. We'll be back with you guys in just a little bit. Sorry guys, we have to do this in total darkness. We just stopped at a Commodore about 25 minutes from Guasaule, from the Honduran frontier. And uh, it, so, Happy tummies, sad legs. Yes, so <laughs> so many mosquitoes, I cannot even describe it. That was insane. Everything from my ankles to my rear hurts from how much it was bitten. I would swat at things and get several mosquitoes in my hand over and over again. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was pretty insane. That was nasty. But the food was excellent, Cubador Amistad. Um, nice place. Now, they only had chicken, so oh. I'm vegetarian. But I talked to them, and I'm like, look, I'm vegetarian. Is this something I can eat? And they're like, no. And I'm like, you got eggs? You got cheese? And they're like, no. And then they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they whipped up a breakfast for me, and it was excellent. They did scrambled eggs with cheese and, I think cheese, and uh, tomatoes and delicious gallo nice. pinto yeah. and tortilla. And, so, and they had some cheese. I don't know why they said they have cheese. And uh, they put together a whole breakfast, and it was really good. Was so good. I'm... Very happy with it. Like that was great. How much did it end up costing? Uh, mine was like four bucks, and I think yours was like three. Okay, that's a little bit, but this is a border Commodore, so it's gotta be a little bit more than. But seven dollars for both of us to have dinner. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. And uh, I got six cents back. I give them uh, I give them five hundred. And they give you two hundred back. Yeah. So three. Yes. Yeah, Country's gonna be. Yeah. It's, well, it's almost eight eight dollars. Yeah. Yeah, for everything, but that's tax, tip, whatever. That's the whole thing. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's that was, uh, yeah, the whole thing was nice except for the mosquitoes. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, that would have been a great experience. We could have lounged and taken our time, but the mosquitoes, I mean, I'm still hurting from the number of mosquitoes that bit me. You know. That's, uh, that's gonna hurt tonight when I try to sleep. We are in such darkness. And there's someone, like, stopped AC? on the road. The AC is on right now. No, uh, when you sleep. I'm oh, I, I can. Most nights I do, but not always. Uh -huh. um, Leon is awfully hot, so going to fresh air at night is a bit much. Mm -hmm. um, but there's lots of times that I do. Yeah, I do not miss it at all. I, I like the, the nights. What is this guy? That is just some weird truck that's going ridiculously slow down the road. You're in my uh, uh, shifter there. People can't see us. They're like, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what's going on. They can't see the road. They can't see us. There's nothing. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, this is the first time I'm doing a video completely in the dark, but we really didn't have much choice. Okay, so we're getting closer to the border. You're going to be heading across Honduras, trying to get to El Salvador. You have to make it all the way across Honduras and all the way through El Salvador to the capital tonight because you have a flight mid-morning. Yes. That's, yeah. Hello, Josie. That is, that is rough. Um, <laughs> and then I have a connecting flight from CDMX to Oaxaca. And then when I get down there, I'm going to sleep on Sunday night. Yeah. Tomorrow night, and then drive three hours to Oaxaca City. I'm flying to Puerto Escondido. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so two years now living in Nicaragua. What do you think? What are your your Nicaraguan takeaways after two years? How do you feel about it? What's your long term plan? Like, oh, I stumped you. That's a hard one. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things to weigh, right? Uh, how do I feel about it versus my long term plan? But separate but still similar. Uh -huh. I think, you know, I'm, I'm really happy like, for, like finally forming like a solid community. Yeah. Um, I'm also really happy because unlike, um, I don't know, I, I won't say this, but I, I, I've gathered a lot of like Nicaraguan friends, mm -hmm. which I think is quite rare. I don't really right. see a lot of like, 
when I asked, like, for example, well, my neighbor is your friend, so I was like, oh, do you have all Nicaraguan friends? They said no. They've been here for like seven years. Oh, oh, that's weird. You know, of the, so... They said they don't, like, they've associated with, like, friends who they go hang out with, go to the beach, but they don't. Like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, right? Yeah, you know, in our area, I feel like the, the majority, <laughs> the majority of the expats that, that we know have lots of friends. They go out and hang out with loads of Nicaraguans all the time. Yeah. Everyone, I can't think of anyone who doesn't. I guess I know some who probably don't, but... But they're not like people we're close to, I guess, which right. maybe that's why, right? The people we're close to tend to go, I don't know. Exactly. But um, but you're not in enclavey areas or anything like that. You're in very Nicaraguan areas most of the time. Yeah, maybe I not might, Granada, I my friends but... come visit, I go visit them. Like, I like, you know, you get the house and stuff. Like, right. I have people over, I, I, I cook in, so. Yeah. For us, one of the things I've said a lot is since moving out of Texas, I think we have a much larger group of friends that we're really close to and hang out with every day here in Nicaragua than anywhere we've ever lived. Oh, wow. Including, I mean, obviously where yeah, I grew up. Is that because up, you have more like free time with your house? So. I have no free time. Like yeah. my free time is so little, True. it's insane. Yeah. And so, no, I think anything but. I had a lot more free time when I lived in Texas because I just worked um, for the bank and, and, you know, I didn't vlog every day. I didn't worry about like a million separate projects. I wasn't involved with the community stuff. Um, and I had, you know, wow. I had good friends, but often they would just come over. Right. And it would come over, have a beer. We had a very small group. And uh, that was kind of it. And of course, I would go out to clubs. I'd go out to bars and stuff. Like, it's not like I never went out. But just the number of friends we had in Texas after living there on and off for a really long time just w was, a, was a good number, but it wasn't as much as we have here. Right. Oh, wow. And, and here in, in three years, it's like we have this huge group of friends that we're really close to um, and see all the time just i don't know seems seems very different and other expats that i know in, in my area in Leon. i think it was hard for me to do that in the first year or two because i think a lot of people my age especially in places i live like mm -hmm. in Canada, uh we didn't have like a lot of similar interests right we didn't have the same, like, same education level like we the same jobs like different life experiences and mm -hmm. so it was hard to find stuff to bond over. Uh-huh. Um, but as like time went on, like I I think I started bonding people for hobbies. Uh-huh. Swamp, people who like hunting, you know, like one of my good friends who's asked me to be the, the godfather's kid, like we go hunting. Right. You know what I mean? That's nice. Like, that's a good trip. Yeah, it's yeah, we're probably lucky. We you know, especially being on the beach, there's a lot of people that just want to come out and chill. Right. And it's like, hey, we're going to the beach. Do you want to go to the beach? Well, who doesn't like going to the beach? Now, there's a real place. No. What is that? Black River we just drove by. What a weird thing to find on the border. Who knows what that was? But now I kind of want to stop. That looked like something I'd find in Europe. Yeah. Like, random, big, board, like, like Albania. Back. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going home. Oh, yeah, actually. I have to, I have to get home, edit this video, get it uploaded. <laughs> I have no time. That's... <laughs> Nobody understands. What time do you wake up on? Like, I, I work until about 3 a.m. every day. Whoa. Because I have to. I, I have no way to. Are you still doing your walks every day? Uh, well, my foot's damaged. My knee oh, barely bends. Yeah, yeah constantly this. physically damaged, but yeah. uh, whenever I can. It's crazy. And uh, I did a ton while we were in Argentina, and I've done some since we got back. I have some really good ones. I was doing quite a, quite a few, and then, um, and, and I was really excited because now I have the car. So I'm able to go out and like get away from just I, not having to leave the house on foot to film. Yeah. Which was super limiting. Like at some point it's like, I'm just filming way too, like maybe it's a new spot, but it's barely a new spot. It was one street over from where I was before. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean. It's actually like a video, like one of your earliest videos when you just started to it was one of those. Like, yo, this is where I don't go, but now on this other street, like when you walk Right, the yeah, and sometimes I have to do that. Now I'm able to be like, okay, there's another village. I'm going to drive to the next village That's dope. and start from there. Yeah. And then it's a lot more interesting. And you can be like, okay, here's this village. Let's go look at it. And, and, and then you get more variety and new things. You know what you should do? You should do the Semana, you should walk, because you love walking. Mm -hmm. Do the Semana Santa walk. From? The Camino. You know, every. Yeah, every right before Semana Santa, they yep. like these different caravans and people walk, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I think you love this. What? I think love this. Look at this. It's a gas station. Huge Uno. Yeah, it makes sense because we're close to the border. That's a ride. Oh, is that storage? What's that? Uh, oh, it's that? A sauce. It I like a storage don't know. Sauce. Let's do it. It's probably, probably a warehouse. It's got to be. We're getting into the logistics zone of the border. 
So, uh, so you think you're going to stay in Nicaragua? Like you're building a community here. Oh yeah, I'll tell you what. I am. I'm on my way to see my two best friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm, at the end of the month, one of my really good friends, he's friends with him in Mexico. He's getting married. Uh huh. Uh, and as much as like three is the thing, uh, I feel like when I'm with my friends, when I'm back home, it's just like, oh, you know, like, mm -hmm. I get like, uh, I guess, oh, kind of homesick, like you mentioned. Get homesick, it's just yeah. like, I don't know, I don't know, it's a hard one, Scotty. <laughs> it's a hard one, it is a hard one. I would like to be able to. It's hard to leave a life behind and have all those connections that are not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, for work and stuff, we ended up moving so much that, I mean, I have really good friends back home, but mostly they're back home, back home, like New York, which I'm definitely never moving back to. And uh, Puente Agallo, uh, we're almost a Somotillo. And um, that's where my close friends are. And even there, they're very spread out, very hard to get together in person. So we talk online um, a little bit. We stay in contact. And then my close friends in Texas, um, the only ones that are really close that we're still in contact with, they moved away. Mm -hmm. And so they're uh, like my best friend is from there. She lives in Belgium now. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, um, that's like, well, we can't go back and, and have that. We'd never get that. Like, she's just as likely to come here or we're just as likely to go to Belgium as to be able to go back to Texas and, and meet up kind yeah. of thing. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, I mean, for sure, like, Nicaragua is a long-term plan for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I have investments here and I have, like, stuff that I don't want to talk about on, on camera. And so, <laughs> don't worry. It, it, we'll blank it out. No one can see can? you. Okay. <laughs> no, don't see um, But, uh... In terms of like, this is where I want to live and settle, start a family and that kind of stuff. I don't think so. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think I, I see Nicaragua as a place that is becoming a home, um, but not like it's, it sounds really messed up, but like a second home. Right. You know what I mean? Like I love California, but then I have a few more on the lake here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, yep. you know, I have like other things planned, like other properties planning here as well, and just. But I don't see it as a place to like raise kids or like have, uh, what do you call it? Like live full time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like spend like, a lot of my time here. Gotcha. I don't know if that makes sense. I think I'm also like in that space of like figuring out how much time exactly do I want to spend. Right. And which times of the months I want to spend. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you've traveled a lot, right? You've lived I all over. Lived, so you've were... lived in nine different countries. So yeah. seven different countries i've been to 88. right yeah i've only been to 40 lived in eight but i did figure out i was in 11 this year nice Hello. which i was like i was talking to someone this morning that asked me some some real basic question i was using the countries i had been to this year as an example for something and then i'm like wait a minute i started counting them i'm like i've been in 11 countries this year nice. <laughs> how is that possible yeah. none of them were like super exciting it wasn't like oh a new country well i mean there's some new but it was it was mostly places that I'm in all the time, which is why I didn't think about it. Yeah. But I was like, okay, no, there was actually a few new, and I went to places in those, like I was in parts of Mexico I've never been in before, multiple for bits of time. And uh, so it was very cool. Um, but yeah. But I think what that's you what moved... I like a lot about like living in places like this, like in Central America or even like uh, Southeast Asia as well, mm -hmm. is the ability to like just go to new countries, places. Show. Yeah, and like that's like where my passion lies. Like my passion lies in traveling. Right, right, yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I was getting at. That it's like when you're a traveler or a um, um, a uh, serial um, expat, right? Right, like obviously yeah. you're an expat and you stay an expat, but you're you're going from one place to another over some period of time, and it's right. Uh, there's a there's a certain amount of like. I'm accumulating places that I really like, but I, I feel an urge to just move on, and not because the place isn't a place I love. So I want to be in a new innate, place. Yeah, you have yeah. that like innate like uh, hunger. Yeah, my yeah. wife, Dominica, really struggles with that. Um, struggles or has the same feeling. She has a really hard time with settling in any one place because she has such a strong draw. But 
what if the next place is really cool? Yeah. Um, so she always wants to be moving on, but yeah, she we also had a good really... conversation about like Asia trip in Asia. Oh yeah, she had a really you good time. See it in her face. And, yeah. yeah. It was really lovely. Yeah, she she really enjoyed the Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, yeah, and and Thailand area, especially Thailand. Um, and uh, see, I miss Asia a lot, man. Yeah. I, 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 okay, I'm gonna say it on camera. I don't like the food here. <laughs> in general, it's not very spicy. Um, right, definitely it's definitely not, not spicy, yeah. Best guy opinion to know, but like Nicaragua does the best rice and beans. There's a lot of stuff that I do like. Um but in terms of variety and spice and season like yep. I guess flavor levels, it's, it's not very complex. Right. And for me, like having like lived in Asia, grew up in the Caribbean, you know, lived in New York for lived yeah. in California we you know, the best restaurants, uh, yeah, the crowd is. Right, and I say that a lot, and especially, and you don't even live in Leon. You live in areas that are often better yeah. than, than where I live. Leon is really tough. Yeah, and I'm always on the move in the crowd, like I'm right. running around, going yeah. to the beach. But like my kids are constantly like, let's go to Managua for food. Right. So like we were just in trying out mugs and trying out Brutal and trying out Limoncello and and you're just always doing that stuff. And we have to, that's where you get the variety from. But you know what it is as well? It's like a lot of my friends in Nicaragua, and I try, you know, some of my friends can't afford to go to spaces. Well, sure. And I don't, one, I don't want to be the one putting the bill every single time, it doesn't feel good. Right. And then two, I want people to feel a part, like my friends to feel a part, I was like, okay, like, I'm going to pay my own tab, or I'm going to pay for the tab for everyone. Not that I, I want them to, but all well, that happens, but I just, yeah. Like going to places where everyone is accommodated. Yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Of course. And not having to think about it. And that's a challenge. For that's, sure. There's not a challenge, it's just a, a limit variant. Well, it's a challenge to find any kind of variety. Yeah. 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 That's that's hard, for sure. Yeah. Yep. It's like, okay, we got hot dog places, hamburger places, carne asado places, fritangas. Yeah. Um, a couple like oh oh knock it tamale kind of place, like you put it the knock it tamale, but the, the number of I actually love knock it uh, Dominica loves, loves them. I'm just, oh, I'm like... I hate them for the first year. I love knocking tomatoes out. Okay, that's funny. I finally get it. I, I still don't eat with bread. I don't know why right. you eat with bread. And what's the other one? The yeah. whole thing is bread. Why do you need more bread? <laughs> it's like, it's like cornbread that isn't like completely cooked, almost. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that it's bread. Right, for any Nicaraguans listening out there, I freeze the, uh, my knocking tomatoes. You freeze them? I freeze them, yeah. I buy like, you know, six of it. By the way, this is I the border. Like, that is beautiful. Uh, but so now, Christmas. what do we do? But what I do when I when I defrost them, uh -huh. I throw in a skillet and I just mix it all together. And it turns into like grits. Oh, it is so good, you dude. That's it's interesting. Gone. It's so good. It's sacrilegious, but it's amazing. Okay, we are five hundred meters from the crossing. I don't think you need to be in this line, though. I don't think so, but I, I think can't you can drive on the side. Oh, I can't. Seat. I have to go into oncoming traffic. But you see how slow they move. Like, that's not a problem. Yeah, no, you need to go in front of them. I know, but yeah. I can't go over there. I don't think I fit. Yeah. I have to go over here. Yeah, for sure. This is the one thing I hate about these Fronteras is that, you know, we are the only vehicle heading into the border that isn't a truck. And it's like, what do you do? There's so many trucks that you can't even get close to the border to know what no, to you do. You can go all the way down. I can't, I can't go through there. Yeah, that's where I get, I get off. I know. That's where we're right at it. Okay. So, um, but there's a car, in, like, a car there are, in that there's a security patrol on the road. I can't get any closer. There's three guys out there. Those are just like high uh, bro. Maybe. Yeah, 100% those are high All right, let's see. Security is not that tight at the border. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see These what we can do. Like, yeah. All right, guys, Josie Mars got to go. He is getting off at the border. We are currently driving into oncoming traffic to pull up to the actual crossing. It's like Christmas. All these trucks are beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Such a funny way to think of it. And uh, I'm just going to pull over over here. Yeah, I wonder if you... I haven't been to this board in ages. Yeah. I've always been bigger than uh, the one in uh, Costa Rica. No, no, it's much smaller. Yeah. Yeah, this is tiny. But I think just to end, I feel like you're asking, like, how do I feel about it? Like, the only thing constant in life is change, right? Yeah. And I embrace it. Like, I love feeling uncertain. Wait, we're here. We're I here. I love figuring out. Uh, and I love being in that place of, like, 
content discovery and new of, things. Oh uh, no, of Nicaragua itself. Oh of, yeah, of, like this love and hate relationship with Nicaragua <laughs> and like putting myself into that place. You know, like yeah, it feels good. Generally, like Nicaragua feels good. You know. Yeah, absolutely. It's always got its challenges, and yeah. it's so different. Yeah. Right. That it's always. It's hard to put it into its box and be like, this is Nicaragua and this is what you do and this is I mean, you like it. I mean, the easy move if I really want to, like, if I just love, like, Latin America, move to Mexico, move to Colombia, move to Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, and just have, like, a great, simple time. But, like, right. Nicaragua challenges you and it puts you into that, like... It does. I like it. I like being uncomfortable, if that makes sense. Yes. I, and <laughs> that, so that's a thing that I say not very often, but I do say it, that I like... And I, I've said it on, on the show when I'm, when I'm listing things like one of the things that we required in a country is that we didn't speak the language. Yeah. Right. It had to push us. But but a place like Cambodia would push us too far. Oh, my God. We're never going to learn Cambodian. Right. Like, it's just I'm realistic. I'm never going to learn Cambodian. I, I was there for six years. I know. I know. Fair amount. It, right. But six years. <laughs> and we know a fair amount, right. Like, are you p calling people and speaking in Cambodian? I mean, Cam like, like, Khmer is pretty, pretty, like. Uh, it's a lot like simple and, and direct and yeah. It's like Nambai, do you want to eat rice? Right. Nambai, like, you want to eat dinner? Nambai, do you want to eat lunch? Like, <laughs> Nambai for like everything we eat. But that does, okay, that makes it Nambai uh... bong, susurai, fasubai. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, but like that's, we always want to have these cultural challenges of, of learning a new culture, of figuring out how to adapt, of, <laughs> you had your sunglasses. Yeah, and no, I just got And, uh, um, and learning the language and, and figuring out how to deal with the mechanics and the logistics and all those things. And we like doing it in new countries, but I want my home country to be also challenging. Like yeah. I, I hated going back to the US and having everything be just so familiar. But what's odd is never in the US have I, even though it's familiar, right? Like New yeah. York, New York has, has gotta be my most familiar because that's where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, but Texas, I put in an awful lot of time and there's such an unbelievable familiarity, but never do I feel as much at home in any of those places, including like my hometown, as I do even in places like Spain or Italy, yeah. which I don't feel as home there as I do here. Yeah. And so like being here, Nicaragua, now I've been here for a little while, right? But not that long. And it really has a comfortable home feeling w without the super strong familiarity so it's like this weird i feel comfort i feel at peace and at home even though it's like but how do you deal with this thing i don't know that's new for me yeah. you know and and the you know what what new word did they just use that i've Where never were you guys in spain because i feel like when you move to like places that are really inundated with expats mm -hmm. um the culture the, the native culture the native people native, yep persons that live there, they're kind of like immune to it. Yep. Whereas here, with all this happened in the last like 30 years, um, there is a really strong sense of neighborly love. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, that's okay, really so, emotional. So we and live, that's I mean really emotional, so but I, really, just, like, I love, I really love like, I love my connections with the people that I meet here. Oh yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And that's what, so it's, that's um, what reminded me of. So I just did an episode, so you're a couple episodes behind on the show. He doesn't yeah. watch a show every day. But he has been on the live stream a number of times. So if you're, if you're a regular on the live stream, you'll you'll often see Josie Mar talking. Um, <laughs> uh, we but I just did an episode because someone asked about where we were in Spain. So I did a Spain episode. We lived in Canyar, which is a tiny village of 400 on the south side of the Sultan Sai, which is the big that? mountain on the south side of Granada. Uh -huh. And so we were the only non-locals in the village at all. Uh -huh. uh, we were in the mountains overlooking. Uh, Orgiva, uh, famous for the book Driving Over Lemons. There were a couple of expats down in Orgiva. That was, you definitely knew that they existed, but they they were not a significant portion of the culture in any yeah, way. Yeah. Um, once in a while, you would get tourists. You'd, you'd have people passing through for sure. Yeah. Mostly backpackers walking through town between places. Um, but we were so far outside the cities and so far up the mountain and not on any road that we were on a, this is your cord, by the way, don't forget it. I know, it's, my phone is completely dead. Oh, 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 it's I, still. I, I, <laughs> don't want to be he's, he's still while. charging at the at the last minute, hoping to have something. Is it actively charging? No, it's dead. It's dead, dead. I unplugged it by accident. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. not good. Um, and uh, uh, 
So it, we were said, completely... you, said you felt like you felt like that was a good place to be home. It was a really good place. We loved it. We, you know, like my kids would hang out with the shop owner and the neighborhood kids because there were only a few would come by and play with them, and they connected. And we connected. We weren't there for a real long time, but we really did feel good about that spot in Spade. And, um, if I was moving back now, I'd want to be one town over. Like I, you know, yeah, sample yeah. the area. You're like, ah, this was nice, but this town, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lan is my is my dream spot in Spain, but it was all amazing. And everywhere we went in Spain was very comfortable, and I mm -hmm. felt very connected. Um, and and Spain is so polished. Yeah. Right. Everything is polished. Everything is perfect. Everything, not like Germany, perfect, but in a different way. Uh -huh. In this like really really well cultured and and everything space and that gives a certain familiarity and comfort right but somehow nicaragua so, is more like the 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 late we've had a few drinks family reunion comfort right, right? like right. Uh, sometimes i'm not sure what's going on with these quirky people but we're always welcome and it's rough around the edges because we've had a few too many beers and and uh yeah you know, I mean, there's there's something beautiful to be part of, I mean, Spain has, as you say, Spain has a really strong sense of identity, right? Yeah. Whereas Nicaragua, as a new world, is, you know, still figuring out its identity. It is. In and, and we are part of that, you know, mm -hmm. and in some really small, small, small way. Right. We are, we are <clears throat> small, maybe unnecessary part of it. Right. You know, maybe we're fucking things up by being here, but uh, I think it's, you know, it's a free world. Uh, but being part of that struggle being part of that self-discovery mm -hmm. or uh identity. or redefining yeah but you know, just, but, but, a... like, but knowing that other people are also defining themselves and exceed it i think yeah you know basically there's so much new in in nicaragua over the last 45 years though that yeah. that's kind of unique even in the new world that there's there's really no countries that are creating so much of their identity anew like obviously and this is why i like living in places like this yeah. as i was saying earlier like it's just like you have the chance to like explore, be a part create, of something yeah explore create yeah. see how people explore help people create like be mm -hmm. part of it share ideas whereas like you know in a lot of these places like spain the us france uh you know the old world i feel like it's just they're so established yeah everything is yeah yeah you know what i mean everything's been done and then you can't do certain things and that's true. Okay, my mind is on this uh, frontier. I have six miles ahead of me. Yeah, I he's got to. Go. Yeah, he's got to go. His phone just turned on. So uh, thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe. Uh, hopefully, we'll have Josie Mar back. We need to do this. Yeah, we need to do some exploring and road trips. I'll be back in six then. weeks. Vacation. Yeah. yeah, he's doing Mexico in uh, hopefully tomorrow. Don't talk. To <laughs> I mean, if I had and, to fly, uh, if I had to, oh, don't even. Oh. Yeah, there's no airports until San. San Salvador. I don't even want to think. I, I, oh. Yep. There's, you might be able to find a, a hopper. I mean, it's late. There's no way you're getting on a flight. I have done this in Colombia as well. Like, we missed a flight in Bogota and then we took a bus to the other, where it was, where the layover was. Uh -huh. I think it was in Cartagena. No, where were, where were Medellin? Medellin. And we yeah. basically, like, missed the first flight, drove to the second location to jump on the same flight. <laughs> and we had to pay for it, even though we already booked it. Right. It was the same plane, same people on the right, plane. Right. <laughs> oh, so that might happen again. Yeah, best best not to miss flights. I know. All right. I uh, hate missing flights. All right. Brother man, thank you so much. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Uh, tell like, and so, give yeah, like and subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I got to drive back through Chinandega all the way back to my house now. Everything you saw in here plus a whole lot more. I got to drive back uh, in the darkness. And uh, you have, let me know. Buy me a tequila. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. I'm going to start that app. We'll see you all. We'll see you all Bye. tomorrow.